I never, almost never spoke about it to my mother, to any family member of mine because it felt like a story out of the movies. <laughs> Everyone, hello, hello, welcome to my channel. My name is Clara Velika Embe. For those of you who are seeing this pretty face for the first time, please don't forget to subscribe on the box down below. It is really important. For those of you that have been supporting me all this while, even when I went A, M, I, A on you guys, thank you so much for your support. I really do appreciate you. In um, December last year, I uploaded a video called Gratitude. And from that video, I, I had an idea where I should be sharing, um, I should be sharing testimonies or big testimonies of what God has done in my life, of the things that we think might be small but quite are quite big, and um, when in terms of when when I have to speak about gratitude, it's the way of a Christian, it's a way of a human being. As long as you're on earth, you have to learn how to be grateful for the things that have happened in your life, for the things that we have, for the things that we are able to acquire. Um, th through whatever medium, we need to be grateful to God for that. Just to get quickly get started on the story, for those of you that are living in South Africa, for those of you who are outside of South Africa, you would come to know that South Africa is a country that is dealing with the issue of gender-based violence, where women and children are being violated and killed on a daily basis. So today I am going to tell you my story of what happened. I'm going to try my best and not include, not talk much about the other person that was with me when this happened, but I'm going to try my best and just give you the best of the, the best of the story. And I don't know if I'm a good storyteller, but I'm going to try. A couple of years ago, when I came in South Africa, um, somebody decided to take me out after my birthday. So I was I was quite young. I would say well, I was a, I was I was a teenager. I would say. So the person took me out, we went shopping, and we did a lot of fun girl stuff. And um, this was before the time of Uber and Taxify and all of those things. So as we, we were having all those outings going from one place to another, we totally ran out of time and realized that we missed our last train home. And this was before Uber and Taxify and all these fancy um, services, traveling services that we have now. Um, so we had to find another means of transportation back home. And I don't know how it is on your part of the country or if you're in this country, you'll get to know that the weekends are usually quiet and um, there's usually less transport, public transport on the road. and yeah there's usually less public transport on the road so at that time there was none whatsoever so you had to find the way to get home and we were we, at that time we lived quite far from home and we did not have a car to actually get back home so it's one of those stories so yes when we did realize that we missed our bright our, our, our train we said okay let's let's go back home um, let's try and walk to the nearest station and see if we can get um, some means of transportation um, so we can even have like a two-legged trip like where you can take a train to a certain destination or take a bus to a certain destination and then from that destination you take another taxi or another bus to your own destination so we wanted to try that means of transportation so we decided to walk when we were walking on our way there we saw a couple of people sitting on the side of the road <laughs> For those of you that already know South Africa, you can already imagine what I'm trying to bring up here. So there were people sitting on the side of the road and we just thought, okay, we saw there were men and women with children sitting outside. So we basically thought, okay, it's fine. They are sitting outside. We are walking. We are going to our destination. So what's the point? <laughs> Nothing is going to happen. Let's just mind our business and keep walking. Well, we, we were walking and we were talking, we were chatting, carrying our bags. And mind you, we went shopping, but we did not carry usual shopping bags. We just put everything in a black bag. So the other individual had his black bag and I had my own black bag. So we were walking, walking, walking. And then um, suddenly I felt someone holding a knife behind me. I realized that the other individual was also apprehended. And um, there was a man holding him, 
with a knife on his back as well and I also had someone holding me with a knife to my back so I could not move the other person could not move but before I knew it the other the the the, the men who apprehended the individual I was with tore like tore the denim jean that the individual was work, was wearing and I would say basically well, I don't the, the way that the toe is, is is clothes. I don't think any human, any res, respectable human being, would basically or would actually want to walk around like that in the road. So the tore it beyond repair, and they took all our bags. It was very traumatizing to 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 experience, and it was my first time being mugged. I don't understand how someone could do that in front of his own children like there were people sitting outside with their children and those are the same people that actually marked us i don't know why a parent in his sane mind would put his child through such an experience through such an ordeal where a child has to see their own parents well doing what they were doing and um and i think that's one of the reasons that's one of the problems with south africa or the world today and so anyway the person, um, once they took everything from us, so we had to separate because the other person could not walk around uh, half naked, I would basically say, because I only left the person with, with a top. So the person had to find other means of um, getting home. But first of all, they had to get something to wear at the bottom. Um, one thing led to another. Um, luckily somebody um, managed to get us um, um, transport money so I managed to get into a train mind you I was still new in the country not knowing where I was going but I had just to rely on my own instincts and the individual just told me okay you have to count the stations you are going to get off on station number eight I was like okay cool on my way home counting one two three four five six seven all right i got in um, station um station number eight i got out and um i was given some money that just in case i was to find some means of transportation just by some luck i was i was able to get some means of transportation to my house i should get it and um yeah i should get it maybe like a taxi or something because that was a lost train coming to my to my house from that other direction <laughs> i'm not going to mention the names of the areas but yeah so as we as i got in the train i got there i got off my eighth station there was a lot of people walking and some people getting into taxis because at that station there happened to be taxis and it looked like um the taxi that was Parked, there was a lost taxi going to my destination so there were a few people in that taxi as well I got in and I got in at the back of the taxi and that was before we had the quantum taxis those quantum at that time it was just a normal minibus taxis so yes I got in and then people were getting off at their stops so when I was the only person remaining in the taxi the driver told me to come and sit in the front so I was like okay cool not a problem even though I was skeptical, I was afraid. I, was, I did not know much about English language and it's all, but it's okay. I just got in the taxi, I got in the front seat, and I was just okay. And as the taxi was, was driving, the, the driver was trying to make conversation with me, and I was just like, I want to get home. I had a very long day after being mugged. I just want to get home. Taxis, the taxi driver is talking to me, and I'm like, just quiet suddenly um, we, we reached our my stop what was supposed to be my stop and I told the driver thank you so much because yeah thank you driver I want to get off the driver refused to let me get off the driver kept driving he drove he drove he drove and drove so it was way past my stop as he kept driving, I kept telling him, thank you, driver, thank you, driver, thank you, driver. And at that time, I could not understand much of English. But the more I was telling him thank you, the more angry I was getting. Like, <laughs> it became like I was insulting him when I was telling him, thank you, I want to get off. Thank you, driver, thank you, driver. So he started um, 
like pushing me towards him he was pushing pulling me sorry towards him and i was pulling i was pulling myself pushing myself away from him pulling pushing anyway one of those two <laughs> so i was trying to get myself away from him as he's pulling me closer to him i was trying to get myself away from him i was like why are you pulling me and the taxi kept doing this um like the taxi was was a bit unstable but and on top of it it was speeding so i kept saying thank you thank you thank you i want to get off i want to go home and it was starting to get dark it was getting dark already it was um close to winter time so around that time of the year when it started to get dark in the afternoon like let's say around it was around march april late march early april so it was getting um darker so and i did not even have a watch on me but I remember one thing about uh, th that time that was a bit funny is that I managed to buy myself a small uh, piece of bread. It had raisins in it and like sugar sprinkled on top. It was one of my favorite things that I got from the day. So I, it was in a, in a brown paper bag. So I was holding it so tight as the guy is pulling me towards him. And I saw he started touching my leg. I was like, no, why are you touching my leg? I was, I was very upset as... He was so upset at me. He was insulting me. I could not make out at that time what he was saying. But you know yourself when someone is insulting you. You know how that sounds like. So he was getting angry and angry and angry. And he took out money. He was giving me money. I said, no, thank you. And I said, no, thank you. And I was making signals to say, I want to go home. I want to go home. Because all I knew is when you're going to get off a taxi, as a newbie in the country, all you could say is, thank you, driver. And the driver would, would stop. Oh, the guy was going on. So we wrestled for some time until I decided that I had to, it's either me, it's either I had to get out or stay in. So as um, we drove for about 10 to 15 minutes without him stopping, and since he was speeding and I saw that I was, it was getting dark, we we're going away from home, like very far from home. I decided that I needed to jump out of the taxi because this guy did not seem, did not have the intention of, of, of dropping me in closer to home. I opened the taxi and I jumped. I remember rolling several times on the floor because the, the place where I jumped, was, there was like a small hill. So I remember rolling several times and um, I was actually wearing a pink skirt, a pink skirt, like light pink skirt and a white top on that day. I rolled, I rolled and rolled and rolled, <laughs> still with my small paper bag in hand, holding on to my piece of bread. <laughs> um, so when I rolled and I got to the bottom because it was like there was, there was like a small hill, when I got to the bottom full of full of sand and everything all over me i was very dirty i felt i felt him stop and reverse it's like it was i could i could hear the tires like someone that suddenly stopped because we were speeding when i jumped out he did not expect me to jump out the way that he, that he did so i jumped out and i when when when, when he stopped he want, i think he wanted to check to see if i was moving or not so I remember laying there pretending that I was dead just for a few seconds. I, I, I pretended I was dead. When I eventually heard, I felt that he was gone, I decided to get up. And funny thing is, I still went to look for my brown bag. <laughs> it was so funny. I still, um, so I managed to get up, took my brown bag, dusted myself off, and I had to remember now how to get home. Remember in the, it was in the area where I knew nobody and it was dark already, but I had to walk back. But what stood out for me in that in this story is that in everything that was happening, I just, I was walking and Psalm 23, the one that says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, was playing in my mind. Because what happened, um, when we missed our train, when we got mugged, actually, it kind of, it's like I was still living a dream. But somehow it also made me strong. It made me numb to everything that was happening around. And with 
the rest the wrestling that I was doing or the wrestle that that the wrestling that I had with the with the driver the taxi driver also felt like a dream even me jumping off a taxi felt like a dream I can't believe that I actually had the confidence to do what I did at that time and when I think about it if that guy had a gun I don't know what would have happened if that guy had a knife he could have stabbed me in the in the taxi I don't even know if he even had a knife I don't know the fact that the guy did not hurt me in any way is nothing but a testimony the fact that we got mugged and I came out safe and sound is nothing but a testimony so I really want to glorify God for that many people are victims of such circumstances such situations such occurrences but they are not here today being mugged on the same day at gun at, at sorry at knife point being arrested is also just a testimony the fact that I'm here to even speak about it I would say that it was like a baptism <laughs> well I got in this country and I think um, it was a baptism a welcoming party welcome to South Africa this is how things run in here so every time of the year around this time whenever I have to think about this thing I would say that God has been good God has been good God has been faithful he allowed me to see this day. He allowed me to go through what I went through for me to give him his glory, to give him his power. So if I had stayed in that taxi once again, I don't know where I would be today. I don't know what could have happened because it was dark. I don't know what that guy would have done with me. Or dump, maybe he would have dumped me in an area. I don't know how I would have even gotten home because I, I did not know how to speak English properly at that time. And was jumping off the taxi the best option for me? I would say at that time, it's only God who gave me that courage to even jump off that taxi. And um, the fact that I even managed to go home, to walk home and even remember where I was coming from. Thankfully, I have a photogenic memory. So I remembered exactly where we drove and how we got to where we got before I jumped off. And it was still in walking distance, so I walked for about 30 to 45 minutes before I managed to see my stop and to an hour before I managed to see our house. So I'm grateful to God for that experience. I give God all the glory. This already shows that it is indeed um, God who protects us. Yes, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, God is indeed always with us. Because that is one scripture that kept running through my head. And indeed, like the Bible says in the book of uh, Psalm 27 verse 5, that even if an army comes against you, that God is able to protect you, God is able to see you through. So I'm really grateful for that experience. I'm really grateful for the fact that even though there are so many women who are falling victims to these things, God keeps protecting me. God keeps showing me his love, his peace, and his joy. And um, um, I never rem I never forgot that guy's face. And I remember the, um, it too, but, it, it, but it kind of took me a few years before I ended up at that station again. And um, but later on, I would say God has been faithful. He has been wonderful. And I give him all the glory. That is the reason why I'm sharing the story. That was my almost kidnapping story here in South Africa. Let us keep praying for the amount of, for the, for the thousands of women and children that are being affected by this. Let us pray for the women of South Africa. Let us pray that God may touch the heart of the men and women that are doing these things. That God may change their hearts. And uh, may they get to know him better so they may not make such mistakes again. So God bless you for watching and remain blessed. Please tune in for another story time video. I've got something juicy and I hope that I told the story better. <laughs> all right. God bless you all.